everybody. Welcome to Big Ten basketball between the Fighting Illini of the University of Illinois, coached by Lou Henson, and the Iowa Hawkeyes with head coach Lou Olson. And now let's meet the starting lineups for this afternoon's game. At the forwards for Illinois, a 6'8 senior from Chicago, number 33, Eddie Johnson. At forward for the Hawkeyes, 6'6 senior from Cleveland, Ohio, number 32, Vince Brooken. For the Fighting Illini from Peoria, a 6'8 senior, number 42, Mark Smith. And for the Hawks, from Iowa City West, 6'11", senior, number 52, Steve Wake. And now let's meet the centers for Illinois. 6'11", senior from Peoria, number 44, Derek Holcomb. From Chicago, St. Lawrence, 6'10", senior, number 54, Steve Klasterson. And the guards for the Illini from South Beloit, Illinois, 6'4", junior, number 22, Perry Raines. For the Hawks, 6'6", junior from Chicago, St. Lawrence, number 40, Kevin Boyle. From West Palm Beach, Florida, a 6'4", freshman, number 12, Derek Harper. And for the Iowa Hawkeyes, a 6'2 junior from Chicago Calumet, number 30, Kenny Arnold. So, hot coach Lute Olsen will try to counter the Illini. The Illini go with Harper, Reigns, Holcomb, Smith, and Johnson. And it will be Holcomb against Waite. As we go to jump center, Krasison, Arnold, Brookins, and Boyle out there as well for the Hawkeyes. And the tip goes to the Illini dressed in the navy blue and or the Hawkeyes in white just underway here in Iowa City Bob Hogan Bob Schultz I hope you'll sit back and enjoy the afternoon with sure. Big Ten basketball on the Iowa television network I'll tell you if the Hawks aren't ready the crowd is they are really with it the Hawks are in a straight man-to-man -man at this time and they are really making it tough the Hawks played a lot of zone against Northwestern on Thursday night it was interesting to see what Lute Olsen would go to Eddie Johnson inside, moves around Klasterson, and Waite right up there, the Twin Towers together, and Waite gets the rebound ahead to Kenny Arnold. So the Illini cannot score on their first possession. Well, Illinois did not take a bad shot. They got a good shot at the basket, they just missed it, but they were very patient. Klasterson almost fell down inside, tipped up around, Brookins misses. Brookins had a great game against Northwestern, 27 points, that was equaling a career high. So two good shots by both teams won't go down, and we're scoreless after about a minute and five seconds. Good drive by Smith. He's cut off. Perry Range against Arnold. Holcomb for the baseline. Good. So the Illini take a 2-0 lead after a minute 15. Now, this is, this is highly unusual. You can see what they're doing. Illinois is spreading out their center to the side, letting their guards penetrate. They penetrated and dished it off to the side, and Holcomb, the 6'11", center is taking the pot shot from the corner. Wait over to Kevin Boyle. Krasison, wait inside, left-handed hook. Good! Steve Wade ties this game at 2-2. A pretty left-handed hook in the lane. Boy, that, that shades it back in 1940 and early 50s. Those long loop and hook shots. Beautiful. And Iowa changes up immediately. Now they go to a zone. Kind of interesting, man to man. Now all of a sudden it's a zone. Well, I think I think this is what Luke's going to do. He's going to keep keep the Illini on their toes the entire afternoon because you cannot st sit in a particular defense very long against this team because they are patient. They are good passers. And Holcomb hits his second shot. Big D puts the Illini up top by a score of four to two. Kevin Boyle against the heavy pressure of Perry Range. Range considered the best defensive player on this Illini team. Krasison inside. He'll go up 
and get it blocked out of bounds. The Hawkeyes will have the ball with 17.31 to go here in the first half. That the Illini up 4-2. to two. Yeah, That was extremely good defense by the Illini underneath there. 6'11", 6'8", guarding Crapson, and they just jammed it right down his throat. Wade looks inside to says, decides to come out to Arnold. Boyle with the basketball right now. Zone pressure by the Illini. It's a tight zone, and the Hawkeyes had trouble with it last Saturday in Champaign. Well, that's what, that's what these coaches do. They're going to make you do the thing you least like to do, and they know that Iowa does not like to shoot over the top. They like to work the ball in close, so they're going to make them shoot over the top, at least to start with, to see whether they're hitting. Kenny Arnold for 18. In, out, and back, in again. We're tied at four. We played over three minutes. Boy, that is great to see. Kenny Arnold went one for seven the last game and was a little bit downhearted after the ball game, but that was good news to see that first one go down. Smith to Derek Harper, the freshman's first shot in and out. Wait with another rebound. Ahead to Kevin Boyle. He'll push it down in a hurry to Vince Brookins. Brookins looks inside, gets it to Krasnison. He's blocked by Holcomb, fouled by Holcomb. Watch, watch the slow mo on this now. This is what Krasnison has to do is take it up into that basket. He's got to challenge him. And that's the only way he can play that ball is play it real tough and go to that basket. It's kind of interesting, too. Boyle is bringing the ball down now. Kenny Arnold is, is fading down the side of the court, and Boyle is bringing the ball up, which is not unusual, but uh, normally uh, Kenny Arnold is the one that takes the ball up the court. They're letting Boyle push it up inside the Brookings. Steve Krasnison from the free throw line. First shot is no good off the front of the rim. Steve needs to get that good extension. When he does, he's a good free thrower. And the second one also up there and no good. Iowa missed several free throw opportunities last week against Champaign about 10 times down the court. They only got one of two free throws. Eddie Johnson, an excellent score, forces a shot. Foul on Vince Brookins. The officials here this afternoon, Richard Weiler of Oakland, Illinois, Darwin Brown of Middletown, and Eric Carmen of Brookston. Yeah, Brookins got a hold of him from the side. He penetrated real good. This is one of the things that just absolutely killed Iowa at Champaign last week. I think that the Illini had something like 31 free throws during the ball game. Eddie Johnson hits his first opportunity. He's a 72% foul shooter. The Illini on top, 5-4. to 16-21 to play here in the first half. Yeah, Iowa outscored them at Champaign on field goals by two, so they lost it at the free throw line. Both teams with one team foul in the early going. Foul's really not a factor. The Illini six, the Hawkeyes four. Arnold to Boyle. Boyle only attempted two shots last week against the Illini. He, of course, is an Illinois native. Would like to do very well here this afternoon. And Boyle is open, and he'll score. We're tied at six. We've yeah. played four minutes. Well, I hope he shoots more than two times today. Oh, he is a bionic man. Had a good ball game against Northwestern, 16 points. Of course. In our last Iowa Television Network game, he had 21 against Purdue. Vince Brookins recovers the errant pass, and the Hawkeyes can go on top. They have not led in this ball game. Boyle, no good. Brookins inside. He'll go up and score. The Hawkeyes by two, eight to six. Oh, that was just gorgeous. Brookins went up and took the ball away. He actually took the ball away from the Illini that had it in his hands, took it to the other side of the basket, and laid it up left-handed. And listen to this crowd go wild. They are really up for this ball game. The crowd very much a factor again in the Purdue game when Iowa blew out the Boilermakers. Mark Smith from the free throw line ties it at eight and silences that crowd. Brookings on the wing. Over to Kenny Arnold. To Boyle. Boyle's in one of two from the outside here in the early going. To Brookins. Good. Vince Brookins well, hits his like first shot from the outside. Iowa 10, Illinois 8. You'd love to be in the bottom of a shot like that. That is just perfection. Derek Harper trying to lead this Illini offense. The highly recruited freshman out of West Palm Beach, Florida. He'll try from 22. No good. Tipped up there. And it will go to Iowa. And we have a timeout on the floor. The score, Iowa 10. The Illini 8. This is the Iowa Television Network. 
14-28 left to go here in the first half. The Iowa Hawkeyes lead by two over the Fighting Illini of Illinois, 10 to eight. Been a very deliberate game here in the early going, Bob Schultz. Both teams looking for the good shot. Well, it really has been. In fact, the, the shots that the Illini are getting down now are about from the free throw line. They're not getting any closer than that. And of course, this is, an, this is a tight Hawkeye defense that's pushing everything back in and not giving them those easy tip-ins. Full court pressure applied by the Illini. Now they'll back off. Kenny Arnold had 10 seconds to get it across the timeline. Craig Tucker in there for the first game. He's the guy that's been burning the nets. 20 points in each of his past two ball games. He had 20 against Iowa last Saturday, 20 against Ohio State on Thursday. Craig Tucker, number 10. And Krasison inside. Boyle was open, but it was a bad pass. Nice save by Kevin. Oh, thrown away. Krasison was not looking. Craig Tucker on the fast break. He'll stop ahead to Holcomb, good. So the Illini tie it up at 10 apiece. Some of the fans wanted traveling, but Holcomb laid it in. He has six points already, and it's Iowa 10, Illinois 10. 13.45 left to go in the first half. Yeah, Arnold, good move, won't get the shot. Tipped up by Krasnison, tipped away. Tucker again. Two no, on Iowa. three break, and he'll slow it down. Iowa's doing pretty good on, on the rebounds there. They're, get, they're getting their second and third tips at the ball, so they're doing all right. Kevin Boyle fouls Perry Range as he dribbles between his legs. Kevin Boyle picks up the second team foul. That's his first of the ball game. You know, this is the second time around in the league, and it's kind of interesting. The first time around in the league, a lot of the new freshmen are, are unknown quantities. A uh, second time around in the league, everybody gets a good chance uh, to look at the films and see what they can and can't do. And it's surprising right now, the guards have not scored for the Illini. The forwards uh, are virtually shut out. It's Derek Holcomb, the fellow that only scored about four points for him in the last game, that's doing the damage. So the Hawks, ha the Hawks have adjusted well uh, defensively. Craig Tucker misses from outside. Steve Krasison in a hurry. Arnold to Brookins across the timeline. Three on three break. Brookins will stop and fire. No good. Eddie Johnson right there. Now Tucker in a hurry. This guy can fly, and he slides in travel. Wet spot on the floor, and Craig Tucker went down, traveling the call. 12.53 left to go in the opening period. Now that was a good call. This, this Craig uh, Tucker is, is one fine uh, basketball player. He was a former junior college All-American. In fact, he averaged 27 points a game in his junior college days. So he is a scorer, and that's why they got him in there. He comes off the bench to get him points. Krasnison at the free throw line, looking inside to Boyle, guarded by Perry Rain. Waiting Krasnison bump inside. Two big guys fighting for position. Steve Waite, in and out. Krasnison gets a try, and Mark Smith comes away with the rebound for the Illini. Craig Tucker across the timeline. He'll set up this Illini offense. Mark Smith. Going to work on Steve Waite. Gets him up in the air, and Waiter call for the foul. Obviously a quickness situation there. Yeah, Smith this is, knows he's quicker than Waite. Well, this is what Lute uh, is worried about, because when he gets both of his big men in there, he, do, he does lose some mobility, which means that one of the big fellas has got to go to the wing or to the corner to guard one of those 6'8 fast forwards. And that time, the, the fast forward was able to beat Waite. Mark Smith at the free throw line, an excellent foul shooter, 88% fourth in the Big Ten this year. Never fails when I say and the guy's an excellent free throw shooter, he always misses. You, you keep saying that, Bob. <laughs> Side at 10, position change underneath. Wade and Krasnison will go under there. And the Illini lead it 11 to 10. Slow paced game, really, which is somewhat of a surprise due to the quickness of the Illini guard. We haven't heard much from him. Arnold, an off-balance shot, and tipped in. It will not count. It will not yeah. count. Offensive goaltending the call on Steve Klassison. An excellent call. The ball was hanging right up there above the cone on the rim. And we have a timeout. The score, the Illini 11, the Hawkeyes 10. This is the Iowa Television Network. Here's that goaltending call that preceded the timeout. Bob Schultz. Yeah, watch, watch Krafson. Krafson gets himself up in the air, and he's not sure it's not going to come out, so he gets his hand on the ring. Definitely goaltending. The ball is still three-quarters of the way into the basket. That was too bad because that was a great shot by Kenny Arnold. Great body control. I thought the shot probably would have gone down anyway. So it prevents the Hawkeyes from taking the lead. The Illini elite it 
11 to 10, 11 54 to go here in the first half. Tucker over to Eddie Johnson. Steve Waite, the big guy, and Iowa definitely controlling the boards here in the early going. Well, that's, that's why Luda's got the big guys in there because they are controlling that offside, which they did not do at Illinois. You've got to control both sides of that board, and the offside was what they were being hurt on at Champaign. Waite looking inside, can't hit anybody. There's Boyle posting up. There's a mismatch there. Kevin will score over Perry Rain. Iowa 12, Illinois 11. Lou Henson gets up off the bench. Coaching his sixth year at Illinois. Mark Smith, good. The Illini lead it now, 13 to 12. With two quick baskets, one on either side. Now this is really great Big Ten basketball. These kids are doing a beautiful job on both ends of the court. Wade is blocked by Holcomb, fast break situation. Tucker and range, Tucker all the way, no good. Well, you can give that, you can give that basket or the basket that didn't occur to Kenny Arnold. He made a beautiful defensive play, and there's another one. Arnold commits a turnover, then makes the steal. Three on two break. Wait. Can't see anybody open. Inside from Klassison. Stolen away by Holcomb. Wait couldn't handle the ball inside. It was a good pass. Lute Olsen was up. He wanted a foul call. Didn't get one. In the foul situation, Iowa has committed three. Illinois, one. Craig Tucker from 21. No good. He's cold. There's a shove off. And now Holcomb commits a foul. No two ways about that one. Holcomb, watch this if you can on Holcomb here. Watch, watch Holcomb's hand push off now. Watch him. He gives Krasnison a good push on the back. It's a nice technique if he can get away with it. He did in that time. And Holcomb now with two personal fouls. That could be a factor. Two team fouls against the Illini. And Mark Gannon will come in. Iowa goes to a smaller lineup now. Mark Gannon, a sophomore out of Iowa City, Regina. Six feet, seven inches tall. A bull underneath the board. Steve Waite will sit down. Yeah, they're going to lose about four inches on that offside rebounding. But I'll tell you, Mark Gannon makes up for that and just his scrappiness. He is a bull in there. Krausis and pumps. No bucket. Offensive foul. And offensive foul called underneath. Well, I'll tell you, that one, I'd have to see that on a replay. Let's take a look at that and see whether or not he went back into him that time. Well, that was a good, a good bit of acting as far as I'm concerned. That's a Hawkeye uh, basket that should have counted. Coach of the year, Lute Olson, very upset. Talking it over with the officials. Steve Krasison commits his first personal. Four team fouls against Iowa. And Craig Tucker will inbound the ball to Derek Harper, the freshman, back into the ball game. Harper, along with Russell Cross, vying for that Newcomer of the Year award in the Big Ten. Eddie Johnson's in trouble. We don't get a five-second call. Tipped out of bounds, and we'll go to Iowa. Well, that Iowa defense is really looking good out there. Steve Carfino has come into the Iowa Hawkeye lineup, so the Hawks counter with a freshman of their own. Carfino, the freshman out of Bellflower, California, an All-American at St. John Bosco High School. In fact, you're seeing some of the seniors on the Illini team out there make the mistakes which is unusual, and Derek Harper for a freshman for uh, the Illini, number 12, is really going to be a honey. Yeah, he's supposed to win the Rookie of the Year award, of course. Who gets it between him and Russell Cross? Uh, could be a toss-up, but this 6'4 kid from Florida is going to be one of the better ones in the Big Ten from here on in. And a foul inside, away from the ball. It will go against Eddie Johnson. His first personal, the third team foul Charles against Charles Illinois. 33, Eddie Johnson, his first. And Brian Leonard will check in for the first time for the Fighting Illini, number 43. Also in the Illinois lineup, number 43, Brian Leonard. Leonard's a 6'10", sophomore out of Belleville, Illinois, guarding Brookings right now. Boyle can't pass inside. Carfino, good penetration. Boyle, good extension. And Iowa leads it 14 to 13. Well, I'll tell you, that's... Kevin Boyle gets the basket, but here again is the young freshman Carfino this flashing to that open point and then penetrating that makes that nice easy 15-foot shot go down. Smith almost turned it over. Tucker to Derek Harper. And Boyle is whistled for the foul. Reaching in on Derek Harper. 
The second foul on Kevin Boyle. He fouled out against the Illini last Saturday. Watch, watch the replay here. Watch Harper. He's a little water bug. Yeah, that was a bad foul. Kevin was reaching in. He should have just slid with him. But Kevin doesn't play anything but 150%, so you can't fault him on that type of a defensive move. And Bobby Hansen will come in for the first time. You get a little bit of an idea how, how tough Illinois could be if they get ahead a little bit in the late going because these guards are little water bugs. They can really move and penetrate. And James Griffin, who had just come into the ball game, scores on his first field goal attempt inside. Got behind the Hawkeye big guys. And Illinois leads at 15-14. Stole it away. Mark Smith ahead to Derek Harper. And he'll score. And a foul was called on Mark Gannon. Unbelievable. It did not even appear that Gannon was anywhere near him. And Gannon is whistled for the foul. After the shot, the basket was good. Well, the Bantam foul call. Well, I tell you, that, that is not a Big Ten foul. He was breathing on him, I think, on that one. I don't think he even touched him. Watch this here. See whether he even gets near him to touch him. Oh, I tell you, that, in my estimation, was not a foul. Reached up and just touched the jersey. And the rebound comes way out. And the ball will go to the Illini. So these are the breaks that went against the Hawkeyes last Saturday in Champaign. The same sort of thing happened. Well, that's exactly right. And uh, the Hawks cannot get down. They've got to... They cannot lose their cool out there. They've got to stay with it real tough. Griffin under heavy pressure from Steve Wade. Gets it outside to Harper. That's Mark Smith against Brookins. Brookins tips it away. Well, I tell you, Brookins is inside Mark Smith's shirt. He is really on top of him. Tucker almost traveled. Over to Harper. Boy, this is good news, too. This, these Hawkeye, this Hawkeye crowd is really up. Brookins, one man to beat to Carfino. Good, and he's fouled by Greg Tucker. Sensational feed. Brookins was going to take it to the basket. Brookins was going to take it to the basket. Watch this steal now by Brookins. He tippy toes down that line. He make, he figures I'm going to go all the way from the basket, gives it to Carfino, and a beautiful, nice left-hand drive in. And just when it appeared the Illini could take a five-point lead, the Hawkeyes have a chance to tie it up now. 17-16, Illinois in the lead. And no good. Both teams are really cold inside. Bobby Hansen. Good. And Iowa leads at 18 Woo. 17. 741 left to go in the first half. This crowd is really alive here in Iowa City. And that's right. Traveling the call on Derek Harper. That's right. A standing ovation from this Fieldhouse crowd. And the momentum slows a bit. We have a television timeout. Iowa 18. The Illini 17 on the Iowa Television Network. And the pendulum swings Iowa's way. Take a look at the traveling call that's coming right up. Yeah, these, these are two freshmen going, going against one another. Probably a freshman mistake on the part of Harper because he took the ball over his shoulder without looking up the floor to see whether or not the defensive men were set. Turned around, and of course, young Carfino was there, planted, and he got the foul. Actually, it was not a foul. It was a traveling call before the offensive charge. And Iowa now with 16 fouls, and Illinois with four. Carfino with the basketball. Brookins to Carfino again. There's that tight zone pressure. Carfino shot over it very well last Saturday. Brookins looks inside. Can't hit anybody. Cross courts it to Bobby Hansen. Good penetration. Hansen, good. <laughs> Iowa by three, 20 to 17. A six point swing after the Illini led it 17 to 14 a couple of moments ago. Well, that's exactly what Lute Olson said that they had to do. They had to go to that penetration by the guards to set up the wingmen, and Carpino is doing a beautiful job of that so far. Good pass inside, Harper to Eddie Johnson, and Johnson scores. That was set up by the freshman. What a ball player he is. Derek Harper, the freshman out of West Palm Beach, Florida. Almost went to Florida, or Florida State, decided to come up and visit with Lou Henson, went to Illinois. Brookins scores from outside, and Iowa's lead back up to three, 22 to 19. 6.31 to play here in the first half. Boy, I tell you, that, that's, uh, that's good string music out there now, the way Brookins is putting that baby in. Harper, a nice move, won't go down. Oh, has he come to play today? That Brookins is on both ends of that court. 
And Carfino tried it to Bobby Hansen. The lob pass. Hansen could not go up and bring it down. And Perry Range will come back in. The freshman sensation, Harper, will sit down. No change there, really, that much in size and quickness. Perry Range also 6'4", as is Derek Harper. Griffin scores over weight. Nice shot. About nice eight footer around. along the baseline. Yeah, it's a nice turnaround jump in there. Iowa 22, Illinois 21. Under six minutes to go. Gannon is all alone and missed the layup. And Griffin is whistled for the foul. Five team fouls on Illinois. Boy, this, this is nice to see, though. This is a beautiful penetrating pass by Hansen down deep. Uh, he, he misses the shot, but he gets the foul. And this is something that they were unable to do at Champion Illinois last week. They were not able to penetrate that particular zone defense they had. And today they're pretty well shredding, and, and they're starting to hit the jump shots. Of course, this is what's going to kill a zone immediately. If you start hitting those 15 to 18 foot jump shots. But those, those are the shots that uh, should be automatic from that free throw line. You can't afford to, to get them and miss them. Iowa is 0 for 4 from the foul stripe right now. 0 for 4. Mark Gannon, a good free throw shooter, 73%. And now they hit one. 23 to 21. Iowa by 2. Full court pressure. Still changing it up. 2 on 1 break. Tucker and Griffin. And Gannon got back there and stopped it. Well, that's beautiful to see, to see a full court pressure and still when the man get by you, still get back in there and walk the other team. That is real mobility. Good passing, interior passing, Mark Smith. Oh, I tell you, didn't get it. that determination on Wade's face is so evident. He really has come to play today. Wade posting up. They don't see him. Carfino from 21. Oh, the freshman hits. Iowa's biggest lead now, four points, 25 to 21. 10 left to go here in the first half. Hope you're enjoying this much as much as we are. Bob Hogan, Bob Schultz, live from the field house in the Iowa Television Network. Tucker, the sniff couldn't hit. Brookins on the fast break. He'll slow it up because it's one on three. Now that was that was using his head. Come on, Mark, hit that baby. Atta boy. <laughs> Mark Gannon puts Iowa by six, and Illinois calls a timeout. 27-21 Hawkeyes on the Iowa Television Network. <laughs> Back here at the Iowa Fieldhouse, Iowa leads it 27-21 over the Illini. 13-4, the Hawkeyes have outscored the Illini in the last four and a half minutes. Well, it's nice to see the people that are, that are doing it. Brookings, uh, of course, being the senior, he should be able to lead him, and he is. But it's, it's Bobby Hansen, Mark Gannon, Carfino, the young kids, the, the, the freshmen and the sophomores that are really doing the job for them out there, both offensively and defensively, in the last three or four minutes. Iowa continues that torrid shooting they had in Evanston on Thursday night where they hit 57%. They've got to be up near that right now. And Illinois is still very cold, and the foul goes against Eddie Johnson. And Eddie Johnson doesn't like it, but he's... Watch, watch this. If you can watch number, number 33 get in there and go over the top. Yeah, his momentum is carrying him into the, the Hawkeye player there. I don't know about that one. Six team foul against the Illini. Six against Iowa as well, so both teams will go into the bonus situation. One and one on the next foul. 4.15 to go here in the first half. Gannon looks inside. Those are those phantom fouls, Bob, we talked about. Right. Brookins from 18, no good. Mark Smith to Derek Harper, a no-look pass, and Harper was surprised just a little bit. Johnson inside, nice interior feed. Holcomb oh. can't score, oh, yes, and a foul will go against Mark Smith, and Steve Carfino will come down and shoot the one and one. Now, Mark Smith made the foul in there, number 42. But I think that's part out of part out of frustration because Mark Gannon is on him offensively. And when he goes to that basket, Mark Gannon is really blocking him. But watch number 44 block 42 off now. He's blocking him off the board. He can't get to that board. And consequently, he makes the foul. No way of getting the ball, but he's just frustrated. Mark Gannon is inside his shirt right now. 
Steve Carpino at the line, a 62% foul shooter. And it's good. Iowa's now hit two in a row after missing their first four opportunities in the foul line. And Vince Brookins will sit down. Kevin Boyle comes back in. Boyle with two personal fouls. Well, I tell you, the Iowa crowd, they're cheering in the right places today. <laughs> they are really alive. Carpino. Iowa its biggest lead eight points 29 to 21 full court pressure again the Illini guards are not hitting from the outside that is the difference in this ball game Terry range across the timeline Mark Smith over to Eddie Johnson range again Derek Harper who's back in there wants the ball he finally gets it the Iowa defense on those forwards down deep is so good they're just not allowing any mobility for those big fellas to operate in Mark Smith an off-balance shot, but it goes down nevertheless. Iowa 29, Illinois 23. 3.15 left to go now in the first half. Well, that was a little bit of a mismatch. Carpino was at 6-1, was on top of 6-8, Mark Smith. And Derek Harper, really a silly foul in that situation. You just want to dog the man. You don't want to do what he does right here. Watch him reach in. That is his purpose. Yeah, no way of stealing the ball, actually. He was behind him. Even if he had hit the ball loose, he couldn't have gotten it. The line shooting one of the bonus for the Hawkeyes, Steve Carpino. So one and one still. The try for Steve Carpino, he just hit two in a row. Not there, but boy, did Bobby Hansen get up in the air. And Mark Gannon wanted the ball, but the Illini will get it out of bounds. Boy, but that, that enthusiasm that Mark Gannon and those kids have out there is infectious because it really picks up the rest of the team, too. Derek Harper, the Hawks slow it down. And the Illini will try it. Kevin Boyle almost tripped over his own man, I believe. Stolen away by Gannon. Ahead to Bobby Hansen. Hansen all the way. Good! It finally went down after rimming around. Well, I'll tell you, that was defense by Gannon and an offense by Hanson. Two really close people out there. They're real good friends. It was nice to see you work together. Good move inside by Mark Smith, but he cannot hit. And Carfino does not commit the offensive foul. Good body control right there. Yeah, Under two and a half minutes to play in the first half. Good ball game here in the Iowa Fieldhouse. Iowa 31. Illinois, 23. Iowa can get up to its biggest lead if it gets a bucket right here. Yeah, Gannon just be patient decides not to now. shoot. Harper with those quick hands, tries to steal, cannot do it. Bobby Hansen to Steve Waite. Good rotation by Iowa. Boyle was hot before he got two personal fouls and had to sit down. We'll see if he still is. Gannon will try from 19. Waite has inside position. Hansen is there, and a foul against Illinois. Eddie Johnson it, reaching it. in, and Hansen will go to the foul line. You know, this, this is really unusual here. I mean, this is a, a, a good show of coaching on Lute Olson's part. He has got these young kids like Bobby Hansen, 6'4", going through the boards like he's never gone to it all season long. At 6'4", he's out rebounding, 6'8", and 6'11", guys in there. And, and Eddie Johnson's got three personal fouls. And this is him Lute Olson. going out. Lou Dolson has indicated this, that Bobby Hansen, probably the, the one failing that he's had this year, has been his weak side rebound. And, and boy, I'll tell you, he is, he's making up for it today. So Eddie Johnson sits down with three personal fouls. Bobby Hansen with two opportunities. He just kind of flung that one up there. Iowa just not shooting well at all from the line here. There's Lou Hansen. Yeah, they've, they've got to get these down. And that one does go down. So Iowa with his biggest lead, nine Back points now, 32-23, 146 to go. Craig Tucker beats Steve Carfino. Oh. Carfino stole it. Sensational defense by Carfino. He outran him, planted his feet, and there was no way that he could get to the basket. Bobby Hansen will try. Put Steve Way right up. No good. Kevin Boyle. And the foul will go against Mark Smith. So the Hawkeyes just out-rebounding the Illini, getting inside position. Two personal fouls against Mark Smith. Watch, watch this rebounding now. Boyle and Hanson and Gannon at 6'4 and 6'5 out rebounding Smith. And those other 6'8 fellas in there and 6'11 Holcomb just doing a sensational job on that board. And watch him go for that ball. 
Iowa is 4 of 10 at the free throw line here in the first half. Kevin Boyle with the 1 and 1 opportunity. Good. Important to hit the front end of that 1 and 1. 1.30 left to go here in the first half. A good halftime show for you. Frosty Mitchell will have head football coach Hayden Fry talking about recruiting. That signing date coming up very soon. We'll see how the Hawkeyes are doing in that endeavor. And Boyle hits the bolt. An 11 point lead now, 34 to 23. And Boyle will come out with two personal fouls, does not want to commit that third one. So Vince Brookins will come back in. Iowa out there with Hanson, Waits, Brookins, Carfino, and Gannon. And Derek Harper for the blue and orange. Terry Range looks inside and travels. Uh, this is unusual because these are good guards for Illinois, but they're they're becoming tentative. They're they're finally be becoming a, a penetrating guard, but once they get in there, they find themselves free and they started to travel on it. Steve Waits, the Hanson fakes the shot, had his man up in the air. Good double pump. Hanson there with the rebound gets it to Waits. Carfino, good offensive rebound by the Hawkeyes inside. Under a minute now to play in the first half. That's just good alert, quick hustle. They're picking up those loose balls. And we have a foul away from the ball. It appears it will go against Iowa. Steve Waits, I believe, but we'll see. No, it is Bobby Hansen who's charged with the foul. An illegal pick is the call. And that means that Derek Holcomb will go to the line on the other side because we are in the bonus situation for both teams. 51 seconds to play. Indiana in first place in the Big Ten leads Purdue 36 to 26. That game is at Purdue, by the way. Purdue just made mincemeat of the Minnesota Gophers on Thursday night in this topsy-turvy Big Ten. Holcomb at the free throw line, one and one. The first one no good, Gannon right there. So both teams having real troubles at the foul line. Must be some sort of jinx there. But Iowa is very hot from the outside. And here comes the four corners with 40 seconds to go. Arnold almost palmed the ball. Down to 30 seconds now. Being dogged in there by Derek Harper. Arnold, good penetration. This is a real good move because Brookins has a 6'11 fella on him and he's be having a hard time covering it. So if they can shoot the ball out to Brookins, he's going to be free. Down to 13 seconds now. So now Iowa will look for the shot. They lead it by 11. That is their biggest lead. Eight seconds. Arnold likes to take the shot in this situation. He'll drive and an offensive foul. I think Derek Harper had read the playbook on that one. We've seen Arnold do it a few times. And Harper stepped right in there. Arnold committed the... Offensive foul, his first personal. Now that's a, but a player control foul will not be a one and one. See whether Arnold got a shoulder around him or not. Now that was pretty close. Four seconds left to play in the first half. Illinois will have to get a quick shot. Craig Tucker, he's a good shooter. Three, two, one second. No good. And Iowa leads it 34 to 23 at intermission. We'll be back. To get some halftime interviews on the Iowa Television Network. Iowa and Illinois came in here. You remember the story. Both six and three in the conference. Both fighting to stay in second place behind first place Indiana. It was a cat and mouse game early. Illinois led it 17 to 14. Was threatening to go up by five. And all of a sudden the momentum changed when Steve Carfino came into the lineup. The Iowa Hawkeyes outscored them 20 to six the rest of the way. They now lead it 34 to 23 at intermission. Frosty Mitchell has an excellent halftime show for us. Let's go down to Frosty Mitchell. Introducing this man to an Iowa sports crowd is about like introducing Pope John to the College of Cardinals. You recognize Hayden Fry, the head coach of the Iowa Hawkeyes, heading into his third big year. Hayden, the first time you came here, we were in ninth. You got us up to fifth the first year, fourth last year. Keep on going. Talking football with Hayden Fry. Hayden, everybody's talking about a new arena for basketball and wrestling. 
You actually have some new facilities that the average fan probably won't even see. Well, Frosty, we feel like we have probably the uh, greatest addition a football uh, program could have in that we have a multi-purpose complex, which means that we have uh, lecture rooms, film rooms, uh, weight rooms, locker rooms, all together in one arena, uh, along with our beautiful new recreation building, and it's going to give us uh, possibly the best multi-purpose uh, lecture room uh, combination in the nation. Hayden, those things help recruiting too, don't they? Well, you know, all young men like to identify with the nice things, a winning program, an enthusiastic crowd, and uh, a fine academic institution. With the addition of these new facilities, now we can brag a little bit about football. Hayden, I should mention, uh, you might not know this, but uh, last week on Wednesday night in Oklahoma City, the headline in the paper said, Sooners lose Jackson. So if people in Iowa don't think that Trey Jackson is important, down in the South, they know. Well, he's a winner, and uh, the great thing about Trey Jackson, uh, he's a quality young man and an outstanding student, as well as a, a great football player, and uh, he's very exciting. He's going to add a lot of explosives to our offense, and uh, we have some other fellows that are committed to come with us that are going to be uh, uh, right in there with Trey battling for a starting position. Hayden, I had three people here on the TV network a week ago, uh, Hilgenberg, Hardy, and Chappelle. You talk about winning people. All of them had just come back from bowl games and 16 bowl appearances by the Hawkeyes since your staff's been here. I think maybe there's a reason. Well, Frosty, uh, as you know, I've been uh, fortunate to know a lot of people in my 30 years of coaching, and uh, we have a great uh, coaching staff at Iowa that contact the people in the bowl games to point out our all-star players, and we've been very fortunate to get uh, our players in bowl appearances, and now we're ready to uh, put it all together and uh, have Iowa in a bowl. All right, Hayden, last year you warned us that your second year was your bad year, and you took us all the way to fourth place in the Big Ten. How's your third year been at uh, Southern Methodist in North Texas? Well, I'm uh, happy to know you've been doing a little research on me, Frosty. Uh, the third year's been a good year, and uh, hopefully uh, with the attitude and the way our youngsters work, it, it'll be an outstanding year. Well, Hayden, I hope you head right back to the airport, although I know there's a lot of good recruits in this building today, so good luck to you. Thank you, Frosty. Hayden Fry, he's the head of the Hawkeyes. In 11 days, you'll know what he's talking about. Maybe another banner recruiting year. Right now, we'll have more basketball after. I owe the Corolla. Illinois, Derek Harper and Perry Range will be the guards. Derek Holcomb, the center. Mark Smith and Big Eddie Johnson will be at forward for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Kenny Arnold, Kevin Boyle in the guard court. Vince Brookins and Steve Waite at forward. Steve Prasison at center. Although Waite will actually jump center against Derek Holcomb. And we're underway, and Iowa controls the tip. Iowa has not controlled many tips here in the Big Ten in the early season. Iowa by 11, 34 to 23. That has been their biggest lead. And Illinois in that man-to-man. -man. Arnold drives. Good. So Iowa scores its first time with the basketball, a 13-point lead. A good drive by Kenny Arnold, the junior out of Chicago. Wants you know, I, to do well against these kids from Illinois. You know, I was just going to say, Arnold really has not penetrated very much this afternoon. He, he penetrated well in the first half, real early, and scored a basket, but it was taken away from him on crashes and tips. But that's what he has to do. Carpino did it late in the first half, and Arnold has got to pick this tempo up and start hitting those seams and driving and dishing it off. Derek Holcomb on the other end is four of five from the outside. Vince Brookins' shot was partially blocked. Good hustle by Kevin Boyle. 11-point lead again, 36-25, and Boyle cannot hit it. Offside rebound, Mark Smith ahead to Derek Harper. Good fast break, and Eddie Johnson cannot handle it. Looks up in the air, says, I can't believe I couldn't pick up that pass. A good pass by the freshman Derek Harper. Yeah, Lou, Lou Henson is, is trying to get his kids moving. He's going to put a press on him now. He's got to get his kids excited, and apparently uh, those big forwards are just not excited out there today. Arnold brings it down. Cursory pressure there by Harper. Oh, nice drive by Kenny Arnold. Gives the Illini a little bit of their own medicine, and Iowa leads it by 13 again, equaling their biggest lead, 38 to 25. Played a minute and a half here in the second half. Well, it, it's, uh, it's incomprehensible at times to see kids turn around from playing great games to poor games, but the Hawks are on top of their game, and the Illini are down at this time. This is a complete reversal. Boyle to Krasison, looks inside, gets it out instead to Kenny Arnold. 
There's Wade, he's open at the free throw line. Brookins will shoot and score. So a 15 point Iowa lead. We said the first few minutes were so important and it is Iowa that has come out red hot. A standing ovation. Listen to that Iowa Fieldhouse crowd. And that crowd has got to stay with them now. This is when they need it. The foul on Vince Brookins, the first personal first team foul of the second half. That crowd has got to keep these Iowa kids juiced up because you win it in the first 10 seconds of this half here if they can command that 13 or 14 point lead. Brookins with two personal fouls. Smith out to Perry Rain. Well, I'll tell you, you watched the, the bionic man here, number 40, Kevin Boyle for Iowa. This kid can really play defense. He really cuts him off at the pass. The surprise in this game, the Illini guards have scored just three points. That's all. Perry Range gets his man up in the air. And there it is again, an outside miss. Eddie Johnson from the baseline. No good. Tipped up in the air. Crasson stays with it. Steve Waite's not going to lead the fast break. No, no way. Brookins, though, will fire and can't hit it. The ball comes into the hands of Perry Range. 17 minutes left to go in the ball game. Iowa leads it by 15. The Illini shot 41% in the first half. They're colder than that here in the second half. Derek Harper almost threw it out of bounds. Nice move by Perry Range, and he's fouled. Steve Waite will pick up the personal foul. The second team yeah, foul against Iowa. This, of course, is a cardinal sin on, uh, on any basketball player, letting a man have the baseline. Crafts of him just stood there, did not take him off the baseline, and consequently he went in, got the basket, and the foul. Wait his second personal. The basket counted and cut into this Hawkeye lead, get it down to 12. An excellent move by Perry Ray. And it won't go. Wait with another rebound. Well, I'll tell you, I wouldn't want to be in there with Wait this afternoon. This guy's going to give some Illini some dental problems. It is really up for this ball game. Boyle looks inside. Brookins to Krasison. Nice move. Tipped away. Holcomb gets it. He came up with the block and the rebound. That was a superb job of defense by the big man. Krasison had to lean into the basket, consequently taking a couple inches off of his stretch, and the man was right on top of the ball. Smith against the much taller and slower weight. Brookins was up there. And the foul will go against Smith after he missed the shot. So he compounded his error. And a couple of substitutions, Watch. and we'll get to those in a moment. Watch the big 6'8", Smith go to that basket. No way he's going to get that ball, and he's over the shoulders. Their big men are just having a hard time in there. And I think a lot of that is just due to the Hawkeyes' tenacity in going for those rebounds themselves. Iowa 40, Illinois 27. Mark Smith with three personal fouls. Mark Gannon is in there, and Smith gets the errant pass, stolen away by Arnold. Arnold just threw a horrible pass, and Mark Smith came away with a bucket. Greg Tucker is also in there for the Illini. He's number 10, putting the pressure on Kenny Arnold. 15, 50 to go. Iowa by 11, 40 to 29. Arnold, good turnaround move, and Kenny scores again. What a second half he's played. Well, his, his last three shots are a la the All-American from last year. Ronnie Lester. Lester. Absolutely. Eight points. Kenny Arnold. Ties him with Vince Brookins and Kevin Boyle for team honors. Nice move by Eddie Johnson. Oh, my. Well, Eddie can... Johnson scores. The basket will count. Well, you can see what happens when those two big going to start to become mobile in there instead of just standing right. around when they decide to go to the basket, which they did not do in the first half. You can see what Henson has told them, though. You've got to go to the basket and challenge those big guys, and they're starting to make moves in that direction. In the first half, they were just standing around taking pot shots on the outside. Johnson now with six points, can make it seven. Steve Waite now with three personal fouls. Iowa with three team fouls in the second half. Tipped out by Derek Holcomb, went over the back of Mark Gannon. The ball went off the foot of Gannon, and Illinois will get out of bounds. Lute Olson is very hot, and we've got a timeout. Iowa by 11 on the Iowa Television Network. <laughs> Iowa led it 34-23 at halftime, and now we've played four minutes and 34 seconds of the second half, and Iowa still leads by 11, 42-31. 
but Illinois making somewhat of a run here, trying to change the momentum of the game. They have the ball inbounding under their own bucket. Smith out to Derek Harper, and the freshman ever so patient. Over to Tucker, junior college transfer. If he gets hot, you really got to watch out because he can bomb away. Holcomb all by himself underneath. Basket by yeah, I think in that, in that timeout, uh, Henson said, come on, guys, it shows you we can get back in this ball game with a little patience, and I think that's what they're doing. They're setting up going a little bit deeper now. And traveling the call on Craig Tucker. Well, that was a fortunate call because the Illini had a four-on-two at the opposite end of the floor. They're starting to really get out of there. I don't think Iowa wants to get into a transition game with the Illini. The Illini are pretty fast. Arnold had his shot rejected by Derek Holcomb after Arnold had hit three straight shots with that pretty drive of his. Under 15 minutes to go now. Iowa by nine, 42 to 33. Arnold looking inside to Krafsison. He'll try the baseline. No good. Nice move by Harper. Ahead to Mark Smith. Good from the baseline. So it's a seven-point lead, and Lute Olsen quickly calls a timeout. Iowa 42, Illinois 35. We'll be back in just a moment on the Iowa Television Network. You're enjoying basketball on the Iowa Television Network. Bob Hogan, Bob Schultz. And the Illini have made a run at the Hawkeyes, outscoring them 10 to 2 since Iowa led by 15, 40 to 25. Well, this is Iowa we breaks that pressure. This is what we were concerned about, too. Uh, they scored 12 points in the first five minutes. If they keep that up, they're going to have a 48-point second half, and that could be damaging. Vince the Hawks Brooke have got to slow them down. Did a good job right there of slowing it down. Iowa by nine now, 44-35, to 35, down near the 14-minute mark. Eddie Johnson playing an excellent second half. Derek Holcomb to Derek Harper. And Sweet D dishes it off to Smith. And Smith will score. So Mark Smith now with 12 points. And a whistle, and Iowa will try it again to inbound it. A seven-point lead, 44 to 37. Boyle to Mark Gannon, and Kenny Arnold breaks the pressure across the timeline now. Brookins wants to hit again, gets it into Krasison, and the foul, oh. and the bucket. Oh, my, did that lay up on the rim absolutely forever. Watch this ball. I, I think this is only because we're playing on the home court, Bob, that this fell in. This, this was destined to go in. Watch that baby just circle around and drop through. Three fouls on Derek Holcomb and Steve Krasison must be living right because that one stayed up there for seemingly minutes. And Iowa can go up by 10 if Krasison can hit this free throw. And he does. Iowa 47, Illinois 37, 13, 39 to play. Three team fouls against Iowa, two against the Illini. Smith to Holcomb, back to Harper. It's been the forwards, Smith and Johnson, that are doing the job, and the big man Holcomb for the Illini. Boy, and here again, uh, it's Mark Gannon really doing a fine defensive job. What a move by Craig Tucker as he comes inside the lane and goes up. Not a big guy, only six feet, one inches tall, but you see why he scored well over that 25 point a game marker last year at Coffeyville Junior College in Kansas. Iowa 47, Illinois 39. Boyle looks inside, Krasison with the move, and Steve Krasison wants the kind of second half he had against Purdue. Two straight buckets, five straight points for Special K. And that's all that he has in the ball game, by the way. Well, those are five big points at this particular time. And Harper quiets the crowd again. So two quick buckets by the penetrating guards, Derek Harper and Craig Tucker. As long as Special K can make those down in, they might as well keep going deep to get to those big fellas. Arnold stops, fires, Boyle with the rebound. And the foul will go against Kenny Arnold. Arnold commits the personal foul, his second, the fourth team foul of yeah, the second this, half. This is just good basketball. Watch the long rebound. Kenny Arnold following his shot like he should. 
and just puts a little pressure on on the big fella from Illinois. He had about a differential of six or seven inches. They just could not get up to that ball. And Steve Carfino right there. That's the man that really ignited the Hawkeyes in the first half. He came into the ball game, and Illinois was up by two points. And that's when the Hawkeyes made the run. Carfino comes in along with Bobby Hansen. Mark Gannon is in there as well, along with Trasterson and Boyle. And Greg Tucker... He's on a streak now. It's Iowa 49, the Illini 43, a six-point lead under 12 minutes to play. Yeah, the Illini are not trying to set up as much as they were in the first half. If those guards get the shot, they're putting it up now. Griffin is in there. He's going to try to stop Steve Prasis, who scored five straight points. And Special K is fouled. No, he traveled. Well, I don't know about the call, but... Steve passes and missed the basket that time by putting the ball on the floor. Had he not had to drop the ball down and pick it up, he'd have had two points or could have even stuffed the basket. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's a type of a, a mental error that you make. It, it takes away from your timing, and he just took away two points. The Illini can cut this lead down to four points if they score right here. Tucker's got the hot hand. And I'll tell you, he's taking off-balance shots, and they're going down. He knows he's hot. He's hit three straight. And it's 49-45. We've got a ball game. Bobby Hansen looks in deep. Stolen away. And Hansen will recover. Harper was... Okay, we got a foul against Craig Tucker. I was about to say that Harper was tripped and no foul was called. But Tucker does commit the foul on Bobby Hansen. That's two on Tucker. Watch it here again. Yeah, this is a steep steal from Hansen here. Yeah, I think that... Probably some momentum of Hanson might have tripped him, but they didn't call the foul. So the Hawks will get the ball. And there's the foul right there on Craig Tucker. Lou Hanson did not like it. And there's Lute Olson. So the floor is a little bit damp right now, and the officials will get the white towel out, wipe it off just a little bit. This is a good ploy that most, most good officials use uh, to keep the... The tempers from flaring and so on. They get out there and rub away some, sometimes some non-existent uh, water or sweat. Good move by them. Calms the crowd down. Get the kids kind of straightened up and ready to play again. Those officials again are Richard Weiler, Darwin Brown, and Eric Harmon. Steve Waite will inbound the ball. No, he will not. Bobby Hansen instead will take it. And Mark Gannon will sit down. Iowa goes to that taller lineup again. And Krasis gets it. We'll go to Carfino. Carfino against Craig Tucker. Hansen to wait, looks inside. Krasison and Griffin are really going at it. Oh! And Iowa will get the ball as Carfino penetrated inside that lane and appeared he got tripped. Yeah, some, some, he tripped over someone. I don't know whose feet it was, but he was going a mile a minute and threw that ball up at the glass, almost shattered it. Rasmussen scores again inside over Eddie Johnson this time. And Iowa's lead back up to six points. 10.50 to play. 51 to 45. Zone pressure now by Iowa. A 2-3 zone. And that's Harper. The man who's hot is Craig Tucker. He'll be the guy to watch. There's Tucker again. He's got the ball. Boyle knocked away by Rasmussen. Eddie Johnson with a 15-footer. And the Illini are hot. 51-47, the lead back to four points. Kind of a nervous crowd here. Almost stolen. Hansen now with a 16-footer. Good. Beautiful. So Harper went for the steal and probably wish he hadn't now because Hansen countered with a bucket. Iowa 53, Illinois 47, and we've reached the halfway point here in the second half. Now under 10 minutes to play. And a timeout, Illinois, Iowa 53, Illinois 47 on the Iowa Television Network. Asking yourself, how in the world did the Illini get back into this ball game after trailing by 15 with the Hawkeyes shooting over 50%? Well, the Illini are shooting 75% here in the second half. 12 out of 16 from the floor. They are red hot. This is exactly what they did against Ohio State in the second half when they scored 52 points last week. They shot over 70% in that particular half, too. 
53-47, down to 9.50 to play. Tucker, he's not going over that big guy. Steve Wade at 6'11". 10 inches differential in height right there. Perry Range, Eddie Johnson, and Perry Range. 13 of 17 now for the field in the second half. It's almost 80%. Iowa 53, Illinois 49. Crassus and Boyle inside, turns, cannot hit it. Tipped out, Boyle with the loose ball rebound. We'll try again. Tipped out by Waite, knocked away. Two on three break, Perry Range will slow it down. Illinois can get it down to two now. That's Smith, Tucker is open. Oh my goodness, the shooting here at 51. And remember, they missed a couple of shots early. Yeah, we've got Brookings and Arnold coming back into the ball game. Yeah, these Illini guards have come alive here. Almost shut out totally in the first half. Harper had three points, and that was it. Now Tucker has eight points. Perry Range with four points. And Harper with five. Crassus it inside. Good. And the foul will go against Derek Holcomb, his fourth personal foul. So Holcomb becomes the first man on the floor to become in foul trouble. That is absolutely the only way that the Hawkeyes should go. When they're getting that ball down in there deep to craft it, and they're either getting the basket or the shot. So let's go with the hot man, and Special K's got it right now. A final for the Big Ten. Minnesota has defeated Northwestern 68 to 62. That game was in Evanston, Illinois, the campus of Northwestern. Crassison with nine points can make it 10. Really taking his time. Steve Crassison hits, and Iowa now up by five, 56 51. Probably a little bit too early for Iowa to go into the slowdown, but you can bet that Lute Olson is thinking about it. Perry Range against Bobby Hanson, Eddie Johnson, and they finally miss one. Much to the relief here of the Iowa Fieldhouse crowd as it goes over the basket support. They could not have continued to hit at that torrid pace. Steve Waite calls a timeout. He got it at the three count. Four count, he would not have been able to call it, and that is the... Timeout, 56, Iowa, 51, Illinois. We'll be back on the Iowa Television Network. They got the banner out here in the Iowa Fieldhouse to bring this Iowa Fieldhouse crowd to its feet. Explanation for that timeout call. You have five seconds to inbound the ball, but on the count of four, you cannot call a timeout. Wait called it on the count of three. So he got the timeout and almost threw it away right there. Iowa by five, 56, 51. Hanson to Kenny Arnold. Yeah, this is a very good defensive ball club for the Illini, too, and it's, it's going to be awful hard to bring that ball up the court unless those big guys come to meet it for Iowa. It's not just the responsibility of that guard. He's got to have some help. Crassison with the hook in and out, and the foul will go against Special K as he attempted to get his own offensive rebound on the miss. But they realize that Derek Holcomb has four personal fouls. They're going to try to foul him out. And Steve Crassison picks up his second personal foul. Very intense player. Five Iowa team fouls, four for the Illini, with 8.02 left in the ballgame. Steve Waite will sit down. Brookens, Boyle, and Crassison now the front line. Hanson and Arnold at the guard. Very range for the Illini to Craig Tucker. Tucker takes his man in deep, forces the shot. And Crassus and so intense at getting rid of his man, almost lost the ball, but Bobby Hansen was there to pick it up. Arnold against Tucker. Down to 7.30 to play. Hansen inside to Crassus. It almost traveled. Hansen will penetrate. No good. Crassus is there and scores. Well, I tell you, he's with us this afternoon. He is tough on those boards. That's where they have to go. Down deep to Special K. He's got it going. And we have a timeout. Iowa leading it 58 to 51. Gives us an opportunity to tell you about the scoring of this ball game. Steve Crassus it now with 12 points. All of those coming in the second half. Vince Brookens has 10. Kenny Arnold eight. And Bobby Hansen nine. Now here's Watch Hansen put it. It's a little bit of a desperation shot that Hansen puts up there. He has a good defensive job by the Illini on him. 
But what special K go up there and get that ball and lay that baby back on that board? For the Illini, Mark Smith now has 12 points. He leads all scores for the Illini. Derek Holcomb with 10. We haven't heard much from him in the second half. He has now four personal fouls, and Krasis is doing a number on him on the offensive end. Eddie Johnson with eight. Craig Tucker with eight on four straight shots, incidentally, in the second half. Derek Harper with five, and Perry Raines with four, and James Griffin with four for the Illini. Do you talk about slowing it down with 7.17 left to go in the ballgame? No, not at all. You've, gotta, you've gotten here 58-51, and you might as well play your own ball game because uh, seven points, you, that can melt away in, in actually seconds. You've got to stay with your ball game. The, the Hawks are doing a good job of getting the ball down in the special K, and this is where they're getting the scoring. So if they stay with that, uh, until they shut special K off, that's the way to go. Go with the man with the hot hand. This telecast is a presentation of the Iowa Television Network with all rights for television owned by Carnaby Square Teleproductions. Any use of this telecast, either in whole or in part, live or delayed, without the written consent of Carnaby Square Teleproductions is strictly prohibited. You know, some of the shots that the Illini are putting down from the outside are just the kind of shots that Lute Olsen would love to have him take because they're long shots, they're from the baselines. Uh, unfortunately, they're hot and they're putting them down. Harper back in the ball game. And he'll start the offense for the Illini. That's Smith to Griffin. Eddie Johnson in and out, back out again. Eddie Johnson with his own rebound and score. Iowa by five, 58-53, 6.50 left to go in the ball game. Another score to pass along to you. Michigan leads Wisconsin 49-32 at halftime. That game going on in Ann Arbor. Boyle will pull a little bit of time off the clock. Got to be patient at this point. Yeah, Iowa's not deviating from their normal offense. They're going with it. Krasison passed up the shot. He had a hook there, decided not to take it. Brookins will fire. Boyle right there. How in the oh. world did he get that up? A scoop <laughs> shot by Kevin Boyle. Was and Iowa leads by seven. What a shot. That was a sensational scoop shot. He knew he couldn't get it up over the top, and he double pumped Spun it up there. I don't know how in the world it went in, but it was a great shot. Eddie Johnson counters oh. for the Illini and a foul on Vince Brookins. Sixth Boy. team foul against Iowa with 6 0 1. Watch this slow mo and take a look at number 33, Johnson, coming in. See whether or not you think he pushes that Iowa player out of there. Watch, watch the contact that he makes. Boy, I tell you, I think that was on the Illini that time. Brookins now with three team fouls. No Hawkeye really in terrible foul trouble. Wade has three. On the other end, Holcomb with four, and he's sitting out of there right now. Griffin doing the job at the center spot. Well, this is the predicament that Iowa was in over at Champaign. The guards hit well. Consequently, you got to go out on the guards, and it loosens up that inside game for these big fellas to start their scoring. Smith scores, and Iowa leads is now 5, 60 to 55, 530 left to go in this ball game. The Illini have committed just four team fouls, while Iowa has committed six. And the next time down, the Illini go to the one and one situation. Again, the Hawkeyes very patient. Brookins is trying to free himself in there with Mark Smith. Special K is giving him some good screens down deep. Brookins from 20 feet. That was a long shot. Surprising one, as a matter of fact. And no foul was oh called. Nothing God. was called on that. That's unbelievable. unbelievable. And Lute Olsen calls a timeout. And Olsen is really chewing on Vince Brookins for taking that shot, which was yeah. forced. And underneath, could not believe that nothing was called. But Bobby Hansen had about six hands on him. He should have been traveling a foul or something, but nothing was called. Well, that's exactly what Lute is doing down there. He is chewing on Brookins and chewing good because Vince put a shot up that time that was not a high percentage shot, a, a shot that Brookins normally does not take. He forced it, and of course that's a no-no as far as he's concerned. Be sure to be with us on the Iowa Television Network next Saturday as the Wildcats of Northwestern meet the Hawks right here in the Fieldhouse. The action that day will start at 3 o'clock. Bob Schultz, Frosty Mitchell, and I will bring you all the exciting play-by-play -play and, of course, halftime interviews exclusively on your Iowa Television Network station. 
What a ball game this one has been. Iowa leads it 60 to 55. The Illini last led it at 17 to 14. And a three-point play tied up the ball game with about eight minutes to go. Here's that situation that we were just talking about. Oh, this is Kevin Boyle's scoop shot. Sensational shot. Oh, my goodness sakes. Iowa will inbound the ball. They're lined up now with Hanson, Boyle, Brookins, Krasison, and Arnold. Kenny with the ball. The Illini right now going with Smith, Johnson, Harper, Range, and Griffin. Still no four-corner situation. Oh, Hanson's wide open for the layup. What a great pass for the special day. Iowa's lead now 7, 62 to 55. Iowa's laying back in that zone defense now. Putting 4.20 to on the go ball, in the ball game. Smith fires. Krasison with a standing rebound. And now you've got to start thinking about the four corners. We're down to four minutes. Yeah. Iowa 62, the Illini 55. Derek Harper is putting extreme pressure on Kenny Arnold out there. Just do not have him have the ball because Derek Harper is really good on the defense. Hanson with it now over to Brookins. Looks inside. Krasison. This one doesn't roll in. A couple already have. This one does not go for Special K. Well, I'll tell you. Special K has only one way to go, and that is to the basket. And watch him lean in again. Now, he does get some charging fouls from time to time. But I'll tell you. He really takes it to him underneath that basket. And Mark Smith has just committed his fourth personal foul. Five team fouls on the Illini. Steve Krasison will be shooting two at the line. Derek Holcomb has come back in. Griffin has sit da sat down. Boy, was it quiet there. When yeah. Krasison shot the yeah. free throw. It really was. You know, the interesting part about this is uh, these people have been on here for almost 40 minutes, and they are tired. And to go to that line and have those muscles coordinate like that, boy, that, that's something. A nine-point lead now. Iowa 64, the Illini 55. The Illini had cut it to two points. That was at 53-51. But now it's back up to nine points. 3.34. Eddie Johnson doesn't get the tip. Holcomb was up over the back, no call. And tipped out of bounds, it will go to Iowa. Good hustle there by Smith with four personal fouls. Greg Tucker will come back in, and Holcomb will sit down. So this is the alignment that we expected more of from the Illini, the three-guard offense. Perry Range, Craig Tucker, and Derek Harper. And Ludolso will talk it over as he takes a look at that. That's right. This Taking uh, the 6'11 Holcomb out of there now. They're getting their small people in. They, they realize that they're coming uh, from nine points behind here. If they want to even tie this thing up. Three minutes and 28 seconds is a long time. And for uh, the Illini, as good as defense players as they are, this is not impossible. So the, I think Luda is saying, okay, guys, this is what we practice. Let's stay with it. And let's not get confused. Let's keep our poise. Still to come on the Iowa Television Network this season, plenty more Hawkeye basketball. February 14th, Iowa against Northwestern. That's next Saturday. And Indiana on February 19th at 7.30 p.m. That's a Thursday night. Purdue on February 21st from West Lafayette. Michigan on the 26th. And Michigan State, March 5th at 7 o'clock. Stay right here on your Iowa Television Network station for all this exciting Hawkeye action. Iowa 64. Illinois 55 with three minutes. And 28 seconds left to go in this ball game. Iowa went on the tear midway through the first half, and they have led the entire second half. 3.28 left to play. The foul situation, Iowa with six team fouls. The Illini with five. So the next time the Illini will go to the line shooting the bonus one and one. You know, these, these two teams here, statistically speaking, are just a complete standoff. Uh, the Illini are averaging about 73 points a game to Iowa's 65. But on the other hand, the Illini's defensive average is 69 the points that they allow to Iowa's only 62 points. So it's just a standoff, statistically speaking. And it's going to go right down to the wire here. 
The Illini in man-to-man -man pressure now. They come out of that zone. Arnold against Harper, kicked by Derek Harper. So quick. Yeah, he really is. I mean, he they, they get the ball because he kicked it, but I tell you, he's using all of those appendages out there to make it tough for Arnold to get that ball in. See Kevin Boyle protect that basketball. Perry Range with a good defense. Tried to get the offensive foul, didn't get it. We're down to 305 and thrown away. Two on one break. Tucker to Harper, he'll score. Under three minutes now, Iowa 64, Illinois 57. Boyle with a rare turnover. And Boy, Tucker went for the steal right there, didn't Isn't get it. Isn't he quick? 2.45 to play, Krasison to Brooken. Those Illini guards are so quick that if they do take a gamble and gamble and guess right, they'll take the ball away from you. And they can recover awfully fast. Brookens all the way, no good. Krasison with the rebound oh. and the shot. Brookens went down, Eddie Johnson got the rebound. Mark Smith does a pirouette around Kenny Arnold. There's Perry Range, a little guy down there. Krasison oh. just took it away. <laughs> We've got a fast break the other side. The oh. ball is out of control. The ball game is out of control. Absolutely out of and control. And we've got men all over the court. Maybe you can pick this up. Watch Craftsism. Watch him make the, make the beautiful stuff on this one. He just puts it right back in his face, gets the ball, makes his outlet pass, and then he slides way off into the corner. Arnold goes down here in just a minute. Actually, they were so out of control, I'm not sure that they knew who they were playing for. There's the foul right there. You can't believe there wasn't one before that. But Mark Smith has just fouled out his fifth personal. And a big score from West Lafayette. Indiana and Purdue tied at 62. The Hoosiers currently lead the Big Ten standings, a record of 7-2 and two after the first half of the season. I tell you, that's good news to see Mark Smith sitting down for the Illini. He is one tremendous ball player, and he is the leading scorer for the Illini in its history. And he has 14 to lead them in that department here this afternoon. Down to 205 now, Iowa by seven. And here's the four corner. Okay, we've been waiting for it. Boyle locked in the corner. Arnold to Brooken. And quickly, you don't want to get it caught down there along the baseline. Good pressure by the Illini guard. 145 to play. Boyle with it. Arnold now. So Arnold, Hanson, Boyle, Brookins, and Krasison must do the job for the Hawkeyes here in the final one minute and 35 seconds. And the foul will go against Derek Harper, and Kenny Arnold will go to the free throw line to shoot one and one. Well, that's a good foul. That's what they have to do. They've got to take the, the gamble or the chance here of uh, fouling and having Iowa miss the free throws. Iowa can ice it if they make their free throws from here on in. Steve Waite looks like he's reporting in here now, too. They're getting a little bit of height. <laughs> Replacement from Crassus and the Waite. So Steve Crassus sits down. What a second half. 14 points for Steve Crassus playing his final game against the Fighting Illini. He, of course, out of Chicago. You can bet he wanted to do a a good job here this afternoon, and he has done. Kenny Arnold's first try from the free throw line this afternoon is good. 65-57 now. Iowa by eight points with 133 left. And the second one also good. So Iowa now leads it by nine points. 66 to 57. Perry Range gets Bobby Hansen to go up and score. So the Illini score quickly. They must, in fact, do that. Hanson in trouble. There's only 10 seconds is all Iowa has to get it up, That's and Boyle right. realized it. And the foul goes against Griffin. And well, Arnold's think. a little bit upset with Kevin Boyle. He'll come back and talk with him. Well, this, is, this is true. The big fella's down the floor. It may look like the guards are having a hard time, and they are, but they're only having a hard time because the big fellas are not coming up the floor to meet that pass. Finally, Wade took it upon himself to get up there around that, that center circle and relieve that pressure. Steve Wade at the foul line. Shooting the one and one. Griffin committing his second personal foul. No good. That could be a big miss. Iowa 66, Illinois 59. We've got one minute and seven seconds to play. Perry Range just hit the last time down. Tucker goes against Brookins. 
misses everything, and the foul will go against Eddie Johnson on the weak side. So the ball game will be settled at the free throw line in the late going with 59 seconds to go. Eddie Johnson has just fouled out. He says, no, I don't have five. He thinks he only has four. That is only his four. You should have seen the look on Eddie Johnson's face. There it is. He says, no way did I have five. So they correct the official score. Eddie Johnson with just four personal fouls. Thank you. And Kevin Boyle at the line to shoot the one and one. Boyle with 10 points, eight of those coming in the first half. You know, that's one thing you don't dispute. The players out there, they know how many fouls they've got on them. Steady said he only had four. Yeah, that's all he had. You keep track of those things pretty much yourself. Kevin is perfect. 67-59 now. Good look at the junior, the floor leader. In fact, off the floor leader for these Iowa Hawkeyes. And he hits a ball. Iowa by nine points. That should probably just about do it. 68 to 59, down to 55 seconds. And Lou Henson wants to talk it over with 55 seconds to go. Gives us an opportunity to say special thanks to many people who have put in a lot of time for Carnaby Square Teleproductions this year. My producer, Tim Noonan, always an outstanding job. Our director, Bob Bracken, you can thank him for all the excellent pictures. Coordinating producers, Mary Bracken and Chuck Lutz out of Sioux City. The operations manager, Dave Swain, doing an excellent job as he always does. On audio, the men responsible for our job, Dave Gore, Bill Houghton, and Bill Runnett. The engineers for this telecast, Ed Eck, John Huffel, and Dick County. On camera, always doing a superb job, Bill Daly, Bill Hawk, Greg Lobeck, and my buddy Ray Smith. Studio director, Jerry Barr, Electronic Graphics, Carol Kaler, and the production's assistants were Tom Christensen, Gary Johnson, Steve Powers, and Buck Hingston. Iowa leads it by nine, 68 to 59, with 55 seconds left to play. Words of wisdom, Bobby Schultz? Well, I think this is one of those things that, uh, you know, we said that they could score 52 points in one half, and the way they started out for the first 10 minutes, uh, they got that thing down with a chance to break the two-point ball game. So at that, at that time, uh, you've got to give credit to the Hawks. They stayed with their game plan and put it out of reach. Nice shot by Tucker with 49 seconds to go here. 68 to 61. Full court pressure again. Bobby Hansen runs over a man. Three on two break. Harper all the way, no good. Rebounded in there by Johnson, he'll score, so apparently it's not over. 68 to 63 now, 31 seconds to go. Arnold must break the pressure, gets it to Kevin Boyd. Vince Brookins across the timeline. Bobby Hansen, three on two break. Brookins wanted the jam, but Griffin went right up there with it. That would have brought the roof down yeah, that's, here. That's beautiful to see, because when Vince makes up his mind to go to that basket, he stretches out so smoothly and doesn't release that ball until it's right up to that basket level. Well, I'll tell you, this is a good Illini team to get out of the, the way. This was a good, a good time to play him, as, as Lute explained uh, after the post-team show uh, last week. He said, I'd like to get right back at him now while our guys are still reminiscent of how they dominated us over here. And boy, they, I'll say this, the Iowa coaching staff did a superb job this week of getting these kids ready. Brookins hits them both. Iowa 70, Illinois 63. Speaking of Lute Olson, we hope to get him on our post-game show with Frosty Mitchell. Eddie Johnson drives the lane. No foul called. The basket does count. There is a foul with 12 seconds to go. Steve Waite went down, and there was no offensive charging call. Eddie Johnson got the ball back and scored. So he has an opportunity to make it a four-point ball game. 70. 265 is the score right now. And the Special free throw can make it 70-66. And Krasnison will check back in for Steve Waite. Kevin Boyle picked up his third personal foul on that one. Johnson with 14 points could become the team leader. He scores right here. In fact, the game leader. Because Iowa's Krasnison has 14 on the other end. And it's good. 70 to 66. See, the Illini have scored 43 points already this half to the 23, so they've doubled it from what they did in the first half. 
for the Illini never giving up fighting back from a nine point deficit here in the final minute and trail by just four points. They'll have Quinn Richardson, another quick guard, at only five feet, 11 inches tall, coming into that lineup as they go for the steal. Trying to get the Iowa Hawkeyes to commit a turnover. Now this is when the coaches earn their money because I'll tell you, the last minute and a half to maybe three minutes of a ball game, when the ball game is this close, you can't ever, you know, figure you've got it locked up. You've got to stay with the game plan. And these fellows, the Illini are taking good timeouts now after their baskets. And I'll tell you, it's not impossible that they could tie this game up in 12 seconds. It's been done before. Hopefully, it isn't done this afternoon. It's kind of interesting, Bob Schultz. Uh, at Thursday night in Evanston, the Hawkeyes jumped out to a 23-point lead in the second half, took a lot of their starters out, let the reserves play, and then all of a sudden, Northwestern got the game back to 10, and Lute Olson was forced to put the starters back into the ball game. Well, I'll tell you, this, this is the way the Big Ten is. You cannot relax in this ball game. These, these fellas play the game for 40 minutes. Uh, in the old days, if you had an eight or a 10 point lead uh, with 10 minutes to go, you were home free. Boy, I tell you, these things can melt overnight on you. And the Illini going with the quickness now. Richardson is number 21. Harper, Tucker, Perry Range is in there, and Eddie Johnson. Five quickest players with 12 seconds to go. Iowa leads at 70 to 66. Well, Iowa's got their best ball handlers in there now. Kevin Boyle is going to be taking that ball out. He's got to be careful where he throws that ball into that <coughs> area right underneath. That's a good move. He used that and whole baseline. Christensen is breaking free, and we have a foul on Craig Tucker on the pass. With that. nine seconds to play, Arnold will go to the free throw line. That was a super move by Boyle. He didn't, he didn't plan himself on that particular play. He could, he could use that whole baseline, and he ran right and used up a little time throwing that ball into a free man. Arnold shooting the one and one. Kenny has 10 points. Balance scoring again for the Hawkeyes. Brookins with 12. Crasson with 14. As Steve Waite comes back in. Arnold with 10. Boyle with 12. And Bobby Hansen with 11 points. And Griffin will come in for Quinn Richardson. Yeah, these are the coaching changes that uh, that make you earn your money. You've got to get weight. Some of the big fellas back in underneath that basket when they're on defense. Immediately after a foul, they'll go back out to get the shooters and the ball handlers back in there. Arnold with his first opportunity of the one and one, and it's good. Rattled around there. Again, it was deathly quiet here in the field house. Yeah, I think Griffin from Illinois didn't think it went in, and he started to take off down the, the floor. Kenny with his second opportunity. The ball feels much lighter right now, I'm sure. And it is good. Iowa 72, Illinois 66. Nine seconds to play. You see the insert of the time there. Tucker from outside, in and out. And that'll do it. Two, one. And that's the ball game. The Iowa Hawkeyes have defeated the fighting Illini by a score of 72 to 66. That's a big win for the Hawkeyes as they get ready for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. They up their record here in the Big Ten stand to seven and three. Still waiting the outcome of the Indiana-Purdue game. That was tied at 62 late in the ball game. Indiana was in first place with a record of 7-2. Illinois will fall to 7-3. and three. If you're wondering what they're doing out there on their screen, they're throwing miniature basketballs all over the place, so they're flying all over our head. The spheroids going <laughs> crazy. Iowa wins it today 70 Two to 66 over the Fighting Illini. And we're going to get Lute Olsen down on the floor with Frosty Mitchell. Steve Krasison will chat with Frosty for a little bit. Krasison having another outstanding ball game, especially in the second half. Boy, the fans are over congratulating Lute. Uh, man, these are the highs that a coach has. If you lose, you have the lows, but boy, this is, a, this is what you enjoy in the coaching field. Okay, let's go downstairs to Frosty. Well, if you wonder why they call it the land of the Giants, Lute brought one of them with him. What'd you tell him at halftime? I told him to start playing for a change. No, no, I didn't do that. We, uh, the guys really played well and sustained the effort very well. Illinois made a good run at us, but they're a great ball club, so they're going to do that. Our guys met the challenge and pulled back out again. It was a great game for us. Look, you had them by 15. They made a run at you down to two, and your team might have really come of age right then. Well, there, we have good people on our squad. Uh, you know, it's, it's a kind of thing, Frosty, where if you have good character, 
I think you can sustain things like that and, and pull back into it. Our guys really played well, I think, for the entire time. Illinois played well in spurts. The difference in the game was we played well, I think, for almost the whole ball game. Well, over here in the land of the Giants, 14-point second half, special case. Steve, what a game. Well, it was, it was, we needed to win very badly to go 7-3 and three instead of 6-4. and four. That's a big difference in the Big Ten. And then start the second half, and they beat us pretty bad over there and on regional TV, and we just had to prove to them that who was the best team. And we, we played a heck of a game. We needed it today really badly. Let's go get a gopher. Oh, yeah, that's, that's number two, yep. Steve wants to get a gopher. How about you, Lou? Well, we uh, we didn't feel we played all that well against Minnesota here. We're very anxious for that ball game, and our club is 4-1 and one on the road, and it doesn't make any difference where we play. I think we've got a shot no matter where it is. We need that one up there because that's another one of those tough, tough places to play, but we've had good success. Look, congratulations. There we are, a big win for the Hawkeyes, still at least tied with Michigan for second place. Let's go back to Bob Hogan, Bob Schultz. Okay, thank you very much, Frosty. The story here, Iowa 72, the Fighting Illini 66. We'll be back to wrap things up in just a moment on the Iowa Television Network.